Hello and welcome to Secrets Mystery Manor. I'm your host, Psychic Zelda Kelly. Warning, this podcast may contain sensitive material. It is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer and listening discretion is advised. Hello and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad that you tuned in today because we've got a very interesting show ahead of us. I'm going to be talking about two, maybe three stories and then a very, very interesting subject that I know that you all have heard about. All of this comes today from our winner, Katherine Schoenfeld, who won the podcast Content Contest. That's a mouthful. Say that three times and you'll be a winner again. (laughs) So she wanted to know and to hear about some paranormal in Israel. Now, I'll tell you, that may not sound like a task, but it certainly is. It took me a little while to really research a lot of this because, you know, the paranormal, even though it exists there, it's a hush, hush topic, right? So there are not too many people that talk about it. Some have written down experiences. Some have given places and people. So we'll do our best today and I'll share a few of these stories, but I want to thank you so much for coming by again. So today I want to talk to you about this first story and it is considering a large red book. Now this is odd. I have really never heard of a story like this before. And it's not isolated to one town or one city or one person. It doesn't discriminate, and I can tell you. But when one sighting comes out, it seems like other sightings take place within just a few days. And then it goes away again. It may be gone for a month. It may be gone for a, two months. It may be gone for a year. No one knows. That, but when it pops up again, It's like random people see it. So no age, no creed, no religion, nothing. It's it. Like I said, it does not discriminate. So it's a non-discriminatory haunting (laughs) we're talking about today. This story is about a large red book. Now this book appears in the evening when you're just getting ready to fall asleep in that drifty time, when you're looking around the room and you're thinking about your day and the kitty is laying on your bed and and he's purring or the dog is laying there with you, you, you get the picture. That sets the stage. You get the picture. And then in the corner of the room, it never appears out in the middle of the room, it's always in a corner, a book appears. Now, how it is described is this almost bright, luminous book, like it is glowing. It is red, and it's a large book from, from what has been written. There's no title on the book, but there's enough detail to see that the edges of the papers are gold. Now how interesting is that? Now here's the creepy part, okay? An old wrinkly dried up hand is holding the book. It's it's holding the book and it will actually stay there for an undisclosed amount of time. It will, however, some people just see the book and the hand and it disappears. Other people will see the hand in the book and it will come closer. I got chills. That's kind of creepy, isn't it? I know you're kind of creeped out about this. I, I am too. It's like, hello, what? Anyway, so this book and this hand will tend to come closer and closer to the person who is seeing it. 
Now, some people say that the book just shows up right in front of them with his hand, no body attached, no full body apparition, no dark shadows, no nothing. Just this creepy, grayish, withered looking hand and this bright red book with the gold edges. Some people say it'll just stay there and, and, and just right in front of them and then just all of a sudden disappear. Some people say that they have actually been hit on top of the head with this book. Like this hand will take this book and smack people. Talk about the creative whack on the side of the head. This is the epitome of that. But all jokes aside, that's very frightening, no matter who you are. So this book will sometimes hit people and then it will pull away and stand or be in front of them and then go back to the corner and disappear. Now, <clears throat> during this whole time, the, the idea of this or, or what people are saying and all have this common story and, and they don't all talk to each other. That's the other thing. It is from all over Israel. Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, uh, uh, you name it. It's all over. So it's all walks of life. Strangers can be family members. Like I said, it doesn't discriminate. So the, the one important element of this is that during this time when the book appears, the person who is lying there is frozen can't see any, you, you can't move, you can't scream. Some people say that they have been able to move just enough to put the covers over your head. <laughs> yeah, that would be me. Raise your hand. Okay, I see you out there raising your hand. Yeah, that would be me. So you freeze during this time. You're frozen in fear. Now, some people say that they didn't really feel fear as much as intrigue, curiosity. What on earth could cause this, where this book comes to people? Now, the, th the interesting thing here is, I wanted to see what happens after this. Was there a particular event that happens in someone's life after this? Could there have been a death in the family? Or could there have been an accident or was this a warning or was this kudos I mean we we don't know but it does not seem like anybody else experienced any type of calamity or event or anything that happened after this sighting the amazing thing is that there was nothing that happens before this so it's just this random act of this hand showing up with this book the one way I want to that that it was described and I think this is a good description and we'll see if you can picture this I know that you have seen these black and white images or black and gray images of different people or places and yet sometimes a portion of it is colorized they'll pick out a, a something like a shoe or a scarf or something like that and they'll colorize it like a like a blue or yellow, green, pink, you name it. That's how this is described. Like the like the room has turned into this gray toned area and this bright red book with gold edges shows up. The book is simple. There's not any words, no title, no nothing. The edges are sharp as it as if it's a brand new book. The, so the, the corners are not worn. It does not even look like it has been opened, some people say, because the binding in the back, the back of the book there where it's bound together does not have a crease in it or does not look like it's been opened. So there is this book. I'm so curious, so, so interesting. What is in that book? And what is the message? 
Is the message that you're supposed to learn something? I don't know. Is the message that this is something that you need to be aware of or is it a warning? Red, I've always thought, was like a warning sign. Like something is coming. But nothing, not even, not even a weather situation occurs. Now this started years and years ago. Some sightings were in the 17, 1800s. And the last written sighting has been in 2019. That doesn't mean it hasn't happened between 2019 and this year, which is 2021. But that's a long span for this to be happening, random too. The fact that it doesn't matter if it is a brand new home or a, a home that is a few years old or even a hundred years old. It doesn't matter if it's farm, inner city, condo, single family, you name it. It doesn't matter if it's a two bedroom, one bedroom, studio apartment, you get the picture. So this, I believe, is attracted to that person. And I don't know what the common denominator is. I don't know the people. I wish that I could interview some of these people. Wouldn't that be interesting? Wouldn't you love to just sit and talk to these people? The youngest person that has accounted for this type of sighting was 13 years old. She was a 13-year-old girl at that time that she had the sighting. And it took her a few years to even get to the point where she could write about it, talk about it, describe it. Imagine being 13 and seeing this. I mean, <laughs> at any age, hello, would be really disturbing. But 13 years old, that is very disturbing for a young person, a teenager, to be seeing this. There's, there's no description that some people have written. No description. I can't describe how I was feeling. It was like the room went silently cold, dull, and, and just void. Can't hear anything. Now some people have said that there were animals in the room with them. So it didn't matter if there was an animal or not in the room, this book in the hand is gonna still show up. But they also say that the animals did not react. Now, now that alone is interesting because I know that many of you who are in the paranormal field who have animals know that animals are capable of seeing into other dimensions and warning us many times of entities or things that are in the same area, room, wherever we are. Amazing. Amazing. But this young girl, I believe her first name was Lacey, 13 years old, said that this book actually came close to her and smacked her on the head. And she said she just felt her head ringing and she could still hear the thud noise that it made when this book hit the top of her head, it was a deafening sound and feeling, and she was frozen, couldn't really do anything. And then all of a sudden, the hand and the book disappear, and it's like life automatically goes back to normal. So you're in this little suspension of time where you void out, you see this book in hand. Ah, it's amazing, isn't it? So I know you're interested in that too. I just feel that there could be so much more behind this to be viewed by so many people, all the walks of life. It doesn't matter what the surroundings are. So I just thought I would share that. And, and that is in Israel now. I've not heard and I've looked to see if this is in Europe or any Asian countries certainly haven't seen any of this in the United States. Let me know if you've seen it. If you're here in the U.S., I'm here in the U.S. So 
I just thought I'd share. I just thought that was interesting. I know this is a story that Catherine would really love. And so I wanted to tell that. The other story, now this is not as creepy, but still very intriguing. That some areas of Tel Aviv and Jerusalem have shadow cats. Now, what is a shadow cat? Well, we know what shadow figures are. We can't really describe what they are, where they come from. If they were human born or, or not created or an entity, whatever, demonic, whatever the case may be. But these are shadow cats. And they are like dark black shadows, but it's, they, I'm, they have been said to run up to people, rub against their leg, and move on. Now, there are several of them. And sometimes, um, you know, kitties that are feral sometimes will run together. Sometimes they don't. And sometimes there's been sightings in the daytime. Now, that's interesting. Where people are rock, locking, rock, put, I can't talk, <laughs> walking along the street, and you see this shadow cat just run up, boom, and hit you on the side of the leg. And you're not the only one that sees it. There's several other people that see it too that runs off and disappears into the atmosphere. Sometimes at night, they will actually come into a person's home. There's been many times where they've said that uh, they've been, people have been wakened out of a, a deep sleep, fully awake, and feeling something walking on their bed. Oh my. <laughs> Count me out of that. Walking on their bed. I know how it feels to have a cat. You know, my, you know me. I'm the cat lady. So my, my cats sleep with me or they sit on the table and watch me sleep, which that's unnerving and another story in its own right. But <laughs> the, these shadow cats will jump on a bed and walk on a person's bed. Now, they don't lay down or purr or anything. They don't even meow. It's not even so you can see their face or their eyes. But the outline is that of a cat. How interesting, right? Sometimes people have said they would be walking from one room to another in their home. And all of a sudden, there's a shadow cat that was like racing from one room to the other, bumps into you, goes into the other room, and you, you walk in and thinking, whoa, wait a minute, where did that cat come from? I don't have a cat. Hmm, that's interesting. So that is the that is another very <laughs> very cool and story, but it's it's kind of it's kind of cool, you know, but we don't know where that comes from either. Are they looping? I don't know. And again, these are random, so random people, all ages. And it's almost as though it's a normal thing for these people. And I would suspect that that's how they feel after so many years. I mean, they don't scare anybody. They might run into you or walk on your bed or, you know, they may, they may run up to you, something like that. But they're just all black there. There's no color. There's no face. It's the outline of a cat. You can see the shadow even in the daylight. Even your home. Doesn't matter what time of day. So that's very interesting. So for you animal lovers like I am, wouldn't that be interesting to have a shadow cat? <laughs> or even a shadow dog. That's another story. I've got a I've got a haunting story of a dog and I've seen the dog and well that was from Tennessee so far from Israel but we'll go there one day you'll love that story so the last story that I have before we get into this very other interesting intriguing subject the last story that I have is about the tours in Israel of the birth site of Christ. Now, from what the tour guides say, I've not been there, and we're not going to get into the biblical 
manuscripts and schematics of this whole thing. So I'm just going to to say what it is that the tour guides say, and that is, back in the day when Christ was born, they actually fashioned their barns underground because it was warmer in the winter, warmer at night, and then in the daytime they could come out. But the very interesting thing is that they built their houses on top of these areas where it would be underground. So it'd be almost like a cave situation, kind of, sort of, I'm thinking, but not really because you could look down into it. So in this particular site where Christ was born, where they had the tour guides, it is said that many times when you're standing in this area, now they have it barricaded off because evidently there's a tremendous drop from the ground level down into what would have been the manger level. But there's many, been many times that people have seen themselves walking around in that lower area in the dress of the day. So draped in these clothing that would have been in the time of Christ, um, that's how they see themselves. Some people say, some men say that they see themselves with beards. Some women say that they see themselves, they recognize their eyes because they've got um, cloth over their heads or around their face or whatever the case may be, they see themselves. Now, they said that their own self recognizes them. Whoa. I just got chills over that. Can you imagine? Oh, hi, how are you? I'll see, yeah, I'll see you in about 2,000 years. And so they recognize themselves. And it's like this moment of this surreal realization that, wow, here, here I am at a very holy site. And I'm seeing myself. Now, there's no mirrors. There's no trickery. It would be pretty hard to do with a lot of random people. But they say that sometimes they give themselves predictions uh, of the future. One gentleman was a retired Navy officer that was uh, there from Haifa and was looking down into this manger, saw himself, and he told himself, the, the self that was in the manger told him that he was going to have a child. It was going to be a daughter, told her what the name was going to be, and that his wife was pregnant. He, after he left this, it was so disturbing and, sh and shook him up so much that he ran out of that area. His friend ran with him and said, what's wrong? You look like he, you saw a ghost. And he said, I did, of me. So he went to the phone. He called his wife and told his wife, you're with child. She didn't even know it. And this was, she was in the United States. He was in Haifa, or was from, stationed in Haifa. So he was in Israel. So he phoned his wife, said, you're pregnant. It is a female. We are going to name her such and such. And lo and behold, she she went to the doctor a few days later, and she was expecting a child. He got back home. They gave birth, and unfortunately, the child did not make it. They had three beautiful children now. But this has been some time ago. And he said this was just such a wonderful experience and really opened his eyes. Now, I don't know, many other people have had experiences like him where they've given predictions of things that were going to life, life events that were going to happen, like marriage, expectancy, divorce, all kinds of different things, death. 
And so that is very interesting in its own right. I just, that's, that's amazing. Now, I, I, I can't even get into that. I'm for once speechless, so mark this down. That might be the only time, right? So I thought that was interesting as well. So these are three very, very good stories of, of sightings and instances in Israel. Now there's some other things, you know, if you want to really get into it, there's um, Sir Douglas's heart that was left behind and, you know, there's a haunted mill, a flour mill, but there's not a lot of information that are on these, that, that are about these. And so they're, they're, like I said, they're pretty hush-hush about it. You know, they, they whisper a lot of these things, right? Because they don't want to bring it into fruition. They don't want to speak these things into an existence because it's disturbing with them. So not like a bunch of us paranormal people that will say, oh, 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 oh okay, send me there, send me there, send me there. I'll, I'll go. Let me load up. Here, here we go. So when I get that, I get both sides because there's a healthy apprehension. And I think it should be uh, some apprehension there. You have to make sure that you're okay and that you're safe when going into any place that it has paranormal activity. That's the smart thing to do is to make sure that you're protected. You know, I've, I've always heard from one of my mentors in the paranormal, and he's not around anymore, but that if you aren't scared going in, then there's something wrong. And I think it's a little healthy to be scared. That's your switch. That's your your monitor to say, okay, where's my meter? Am, am I just a little apprehensive and, and anxious right now? Or am I full-blown, let's get the heck out of here? So wherever your meter is, is where you have to make sure your comfort level is. So we're going to break right now for this important message and we'll be right back. See you soon. Does having so many questions make you want to, you know, scream? <coughs> when will she return? When is he coming back? Why did he act that way? Why did she say this? When am I getting my new car? When am I getting my new house? What about my job? What about, what about, what about? Well, you've come to the right place. Hop on over to www.psychicsecrets.com. That's psychicsecrets.com. Two S's now. And book yourself with one of our very experienced and capable advisors. You can find me there. I'm extension number 11. You can book online or you can call in. It's up to you. You can chat with a psychic. You can actually have a video call with the psychic. We'll be glad to talk with you and give you the answers that you deserve. So don't fret, and especially don't pull your hair out over this. And we certainly don't want to hear you scream, right? Come on over to PsychicSecrets.com. Let us help you. Won't you do that? See you soon. Hello folks, we're back. So for the sake of the timing of this video, it was getting a little long, and our next exploration of information from Ghosts and Paranormal Israel was going to be a little longer, which was making this podcast bigger than what was really a good size to be. So we will name this part one, and we will have a part two coming up very, very shortly. Now, I want to invite you to stop on over to PsychicSecrets.com. That's www.PsychicSecrets. That's two S's now. PsychicSecrets.com. Browse around. Take a look at the blog. A lot of fun articles there. You'll find our podcasts, obviously, 
you can book for an advisor online and you'll find me Zelda I'm extension number 11 so step on over there take a break read the blog have a lot of fun on the site and in the meantime you can also make arrangements to speak to an advisor by chat and by video now that's really something so step on over there and I'd also like to invite you to my group House of Zelda where we have a lot of fun and we talk about the paranormal and we talk about ghosts and goblins and those things that go bump in the night but especially because psychic secrets have trusted me with featuring them in the group and it really is a great idea to stop on over there and join us because psychic secrets gives us permission to run specials like well for instance we have a one dollar per minute up to 30 minutes for new callers we can really get a lot accomplished in 30 minutes and that's a good price to get started also we run happy hour minute specials we run contests we have all kinds of little goodies for you so step on over there and join us won't you do that for today so i want to thank you again for stopping by and thank you Catherine, for this very interesting presentation today of the ghost and paranormal of israel so stay tuned for part two which is extremely interesting and i know that you'll enjoy that as well thanks so much i appreciate you you be well be brave and especially you be blessed this is zelda saying bye for now until next time thanks so much for listening i just love this don't you?